Let's talk about a squad now on the D2 scene that has hit the transfer portal pretty hard. We've talked a good bit about Lockhaven, the bald eagles on this particular program, and shout out to Coach Mulrooney and Chris Collier, who uh, Collier, who joined us uh, on the show not too long ago, honestly. Really enjoyed having them on. And, you know, we had them on not just because they're great people, because they are, but this program is coming off a season in which they had their best year in over 40 years, right? They haven't had a winning season since, I believe, 1940-something. Right, and they're a play away last year from going 500, and again had a, a what is compared to their history really good year. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about how they fit the transfer portal and what they've been doing with this recruiting class. Now, Lock Haven PSAC squad. For those of you who don't know, signed 42 on National Signing Day. They did graduate 25 from last year's roster, so there's a good amount of space cleared up. I would assume with that comes a good chunk of scholarship money to kind of dole out to a lot of these guys, and you'll see here who they're bringing in exactly. Um, I guess let's just start with that. I mean, let's look at some of the guys they are bringing in here, just scrolling through their football account. Here's a big one. How about a tight end from Florida Atlantic? Rise McDonald. That seems like a kind of a big deal to get him down at the D2 level uh, at a place like Lock Haven. Keep going down. It doesn't end. Deshaun Evans. We'll talk about the quarterback situation I think, a little bit more in depth, but I guess I can, I can allude to it right now. They're bringing in three transfer quarterbacks into the fall training camp. Deshaun Evans is one of the three, and his situation, obviously, you see the logo on the helmet there from Notre Dame College, who unfortunately shut down recently. He is joining uh, Lock Haven. He only has one year of eligibility left, I do believe. He is one of the three quarterbacks heading into fall camp 24 with the Bald Eagles. Another man here coming from Bloomsburg, and we'll talk about that uh, PSAC connection here in a sec, but uh, Nadir McLeod is a guy making that transition over. And I guess I'll just touch on it right now. When you look at a lot of these guys, we'll go through the list. I don't know if I've ever seen so many guys that have been recruited to come play at an in-conference school. That's something to me that is very interesting. They've got guys from, here's Bloomsburg, also from Millersville, Clarion, Mercyhurst, who's formerly PSAC, Shippensburg. Like, you go down the list. You're getting guys that, quite honestly, you matched up against all last season. And Coach, uh, you know, Coach I'm over there, he had talked about, um, Coach Mulrooney had talked about how, you know, you play against these guys and they score touchdowns and they make big plays against you. I think the back of his head, he's just taking note. Like, okay. Okay, yeah, I remember those guys. And then you see, I'm assuming he's, you know, sitting like we do on X, scrolling through. Oh, hit the portal. Yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah, let's go ahead and get him. Let's go ahead and, and get all these guys. <laughs> I love that. I mean, it's a great attitude and mindset. I just don't think you see that very often. So it's it's cool that they're able to do that. And then, again, feels like a kind of a big deal here. How about running back K.J. Howard from Ohio University? Listed as a running back here. Believe he played most of his snaps at wide receiver for the Bobcats there in the MAC. So, I would assume that has a little bit to do with how they plan to utilize him in the backfield offensively at Lockhaven. But once again, a D1 guy coming on D2 level, obviously a, a great athlete and, and should be a good prospect for them. Here's another quarterback coming in and Jackson Ostrowski, and he is coming from the University of Rhode Island. So once again, we're talking that D1 connection. Guys who probably aren't seeing the amount of playing time or whatever it is the Division One level want to come and just be the dude. And you know what I think is, is special about that, and you might ask what makes Lockhaven a good spot for that, you look at last year, that's the best example that you probably have. Chris Collier, who we had on the on the podcast here, like I said just recently, he's a guy that played at the Division One level, didn't get maybe the carries that he wanted, comes to the peace stack, he's got one year left, and he's promised, he's like, hey, you're going to come in, you're going to be the dude in the backfield for us. You're going to be the bell cow. And he was the bell cow, right? This dude's averaging over 20 carries a game, and he's toting the rock for them. Ends up being, uh, I believe, a first-team All-American. He was on D2 football.com's elite 100 list. Uh, it racked up basically every accolade in the book, first team all piece sack and all, all kinds of things. He now gets an invite to go compete uh, with the Baltimore Ravens, signs a UDFA deal with the Baltimore Ravens. I'm sure if you've seen that, if you follow us on any of the socials, but I say all of that because Lock Haven has proven in very recent history, hey, if you're a guy, you think you're a dude, you are a dude at the D1 level, you're just not getting that opportunity. Come here. We're going to have a spot for you. We're a program on the rise. We're trending in the right direction. You're going to play also against really good competition. We've heard numerous guests on this show talk about the PSAC and the depth in that conference. And I think when you look at Division II landscape as a whole, between the MIAA and the PSAC, I don't think there's other conferences that have the same depth. Depth, excuse me. The GLIAC has a really great top portion, right? You talk about GV and Ferris. Then you got a couple teams like Davenport and Sag, you know, Michigan Tech, whatever, that are kind of in that conversation. But GV and Ferris kind of run that, that league. You look down at the Gulf South, right? You've got West Florida. You've got Valdosta. you got Delta State. 
But then what? You know what I mean? It kind of drops off a little bit. You look at the RMAC. It's kind of the same, kind of the same deal. I feel like between the MIAA and the PSEC, just my personal opinion, those two conferences probably have the best depth in all of Division Two, in that there are teams from top to bottom that can come out and win that conference. Right? I think this past year, a great example of that could be in the MIAA. How about the year Emporia State had with Brayden Gleason, Brayden Gleason excuse me, under center? And uh, on the flip side of that, in the PSAC, think of a team here like Kutztown, who maybe wasn't picked above squads like Shepard, who has had a lot of success. Slippery Rock is always at the top, and you have other teams that are always in the conversation. Um, Lockhaven is certainly going to be one of those teams very soon. So I, for me, that that playing against great competition at the D1 level, or D2 level, excuse me, and getting quality film, to then show to the respective eyes, the recruiting coordinators, whoever at the NFL level, is big. So they're getting a lot of these uh, Division I caliber guys. Jackson is the second quarterback of which they have dipped into the transfer portal and they're bringing to uh, Pennsylvania down there. But keep moving through here. And you look here. How about another D2 guy? On the defensive line, Jamel Flowers, he's coming over from Virginia Union. Really stacked defense over there that they had, and they're hoping for a really big year. They're uh, ranked in the top 25 in the preseason, so another big get for them on the defensive side of the ball. Here you go. PSAC squad, Shepard University, tight end Jake Yelton is making the trip over. And then uh, I believe, yeah, we got a couple more. This is uh, some of the high school guys here um, that you can see, but there was one more guy I wanted to – Highlight from their first round. I'll uh, find. I'm going to save you the scrolling. But they've got uh, his name's William Pickett, and uh, he is a quarterback coming in who actually originally, if I'm correct here in doing my little internet research, uh, went to Cortland out of high school. The D3 the team, the reigning national, defending national champion. He went to Cortland, was there for I believe two years, and uh, then made his way over to uh, Nassau Community College. I believe, NCC, and now is getting another opportunity with the Bald Eagles at Lock Haven. And I'll find his uh, little announcement video here if you just bear with me. There's so many. Like I said, I mean, they brought in over 40 guys in National Signing Day. And, yeah, that's a lot of guys. But, again, for them, there's a great balance of guys that um, – this isn't all high school guys, right? These are guys that are coming in. These are um, a lot of grad transfer type guys. This is uh, his little announcement for uh, – pick it here that's uh their other quarterback they'll be bringing in to fall camp and that's where things get really interesting right because these guys are all guys who have playing experience obviously and they're coming from very different situations I mean you couldn't probably have three quarterbacks with more different situations than these three guys one of them is coming over um from Notre Dame College right and uh he's got one year of eligibility left his school just shut down the other one right here is Kind of just like looking for another opportunity, coming out of the community college scene, looking for another chance to play ball. And then finally, you've got a guy coming down from the D1 level who's looking to be the dude and to finally get the reps that he feels he deserves. So I would assume heading into fall camp, not that there would be any animosity or anything, but you're going to have a great quarterback competition down there in Pennsylvania. We will uh, certainly follow in and see how that pans out. But